Robots may seem helpful, but one wrong command and they can take over the whole world. San Francisco is a futuristic city where robots have become a common part of life. Even gambling involves them. People put in all of their savings in illegal robot fights against the famous gangster Yama. No one seems to be capable enough to defeat Yama's scary robot. Suddenly a young teenager named Hiro steps out of the crowd. He brings his funny-looking robot to fight and Yama believes it's just a joke. Little did he know Hiro is a robotics lover whose tiny invention can take over huge robots. Yama feels insulted after losing the fight so he sends his man to teach Hiro a lesson. Thankfully, Hiro's elder brother Tadashi comes in at the right time and takes away Hiro. After running away from the goons for a few miles, the siblings run into a police car. Everyone is taken to jail but Hiro is forgiven due to his young age. His aunt Cass scolds him for causing trouble and advises him to focus on study. She has been taking care of the kids since their parents died. Tadashi offers Hiro to join his high school but Hiro believes there's no school worthy of him to join in. He can learn by himself. To prove him wrong, Tadashi takes him to his educational institute and shows him their high-tech laboratory. Hiro also gets to meet Tadashi's close friends nicknamed Wasabi, Gogo, Honey, and Fred. They all love science and spend most of their time inventing or modifying different machines. Tadashi is also working on a project. It's an inflatable robot called Baymax. Its purpose is to provide instant healthcare to its users. It activates on hearing any sound of distress, immediately scans the human's body for injuries, and only gets back to sleep when the patient is completely satisfied with its service. Hero also gets to meet the famous scientist and robotics head of this institute, Robert Callahan. After getting the insights, Hero realizes this is his dream institute. Though he's too young, he still can get admitted. The only thing he needs to do is impress Callahan at the institute's annual robotics showcase. Hero gets to work right away, but he can't figure out something unique. Tadashi suggests looking at things from a different angle, and that's how Hiro creates his biggest invention. He nervously presents it to the public, but people seem to be driven towards it. It's a technology called the Microbots. They are tiny robots that can join to form literally anything. The user needs to wear the neural transmitter on his head, and whatever he imagines next, the Microbots will make it a reality. Hiro's invention is a hit, and he receives collective applause. The CEO of famous tech company Alistair Cray wants to buy this invention at a huge price, but Hero rejects the offer. He wants to stay with Callahan and modify his inventions further. Callahan admires Hero's decision and gives him the admission letter. Aunt Cass gets really delighted to hear the big news and treats everyone to dinner. Tadashi excuses himself as he wants to have a word with Hero. He appreciates his little brother for getting serious with his life. Finally, they both can achieve a bright future together. Hiro is eagerly looking forward to studying in the same class as his big brother, but fate has an unfortunate surprise. All of a sudden, the exhibition hall catches fire. Everyone evacuates in time, but Callahan is stuck inside. Tadashi can't let his mentor die. He jumps in the flames to save Callahan, but a huge blast kills both of them. Several weeks pass, but Hiro can't recover from the trauma. His classes have started, but he has no will to study without his brother around him. He hasn't been properly eating or sleeping for days. Hiro hits his toe while getting up and the sound wakes up Baymax. He insists on treating the injuries, but Hiro doesn't want to. The only injury that's hurting him is Tadashi's absence and it can't be treated. Hiro tries to put away Baymax, but he suddenly feels something moving in his pocket. It's one of the microbots he invented. Surprisingly, it's trying to go somewhere even though all the other microbots are destroyed in the fire. Hiro believes it's defective and puts it aside. Baymax assumes that fixing the microbot may fix Hero's mood, so he starts following the direction indicated by the little bot. Hero realizes Baymax's absence and starts looking for him. His aunt stops him at the door and Baymax goes away really far. Hero tries to catch up and reaches an abandoned factory. The microbot is pointing towards the factory, but the gate is locked. Hero and Baymax enter through the broken window and look around the creepy place. There's a production machine that is creating microbots at a large scale. Thousands of them have already been produced. Hero is left in shock, but he must hurry back immediately. There's a masked man behind this, and he doesn't like intruders. Hero and Baymax rush towards the exit while the masked man attacks them with microbots. Luckily, Hero and Baymax get out in time. They immediately get to the police station and report about the illegal production. The policeman is definitely not a robotics expert and doesn't understand a word. He prefers seeing Hero's guardian, but Hero doesn't want Aunt Cass to know about this issue. He gets back home and wishes Tadashi was here. Seeing him sad, Baymax downloads information to fix personal loss. He contacts Hero's friends and gives Hero a warm hug. Hero recalls the fire incident and realizes that it might not be an accident. The masked man is the one who stole the microbots on the exhibition night and then set fire to cover his tracks. He's the murderer of Tadashi and Hero must take revenge. 
To face the evil man, Baymax must be upgraded to a fighting robot. Hero makes all the arrangements and designs combat armor for Baymax. He also downloads new updates enabling Baymax to fight like a ninja. After the preparations, they get back to the abandoned factory but no one is there. Hero notices someone at the seaport. It's the Masked Man. Hero hides away with Baymax, but Tadashi's friends jump there out of nowhere. They had received Baymax's message and came to give Hero emotional support. Hero tries to keep everyone quiet, but he fails and the Masked Man spots them. He attacks with a huge army of microbots. Wasabi starts the car and they all get in. They are driving around the city, but the Masked Man keeps following them. Gogo can't stand Wasabi's slow driving anymore and takes charge. She drives recklessly through the streets and under the bridges. Despite the efforts, the masked man is still after them and floods with microbots. The poor car loses track and falls deep into the water. The masked man assumes the kids have drowned so he leaves happily. Little did he know, Hero and his friends survived. Baymax's inflated body helps everyone float to the surface. They must find a good place to hide from the enemy, and Fred knows a safe sight. He takes everyone to a huge mansion. Surprisingly, it actually belongs to Fred. Due to his shabby appearance, everyone thought he was homeless, but in reality, he's as rich as a king. After taking a little rest, Hero gets back to his investigation. He has seen a weird logo on the masked man, but no one recognizes it. Fred believes that Alistair is behind all this, as he always wanted to buy microbots. But why would such a high-profile dude come down to stealing? Baymax has some information, too. During their encounter, he scanned the masked man's body and saved his medical details. It's still impossible to track the medical records of the whole city, so the only way left is to face the evil man and snatch away the neural transmitter attached to the mask. Without it, he will not be able to control the microbots. Hero starts working and designs special armor for each of his friends. He gives everyone special powers to face the enemy. The one to get the best armor is Baymax. He has abilities like rocket fists and flying wings. He still needs some practice, though. Baymax takes Hero for a ride around the city and masters his flying skills. After a hard day, they sit down to take a rest. There's still so much to do. Hero has improved Baymax's scanning power and now he can scan the whole city at once. Using this ability, Baymax locates the medical data he got from the Masked Man. It points towards a nearby island. Hero and his friends fly to the island and find an abandoned headquarters there. While roaming around, they notice a destroyed laboratory with unique machines. Surprisingly, the computers there are still working. They recorded everything that once happened there. These were Alistair's headquarters and his high-tech labs. He had invented the most unbelievable device, the teleportation machine. Alistair exhibited its working by teleporting a hat, but he just didn't stop there. He wanted to experiment on human beings and sent one of his workers named Abigail. The staff warned Alistair of some irregularities in the machine, but he didn't care and proceeded with the experiment. They started to lose contact with Abigail and then one of the teleportation tunnel blasts. The government ordered the experiment to stop immediately and shut down the headquarters. However, Abigail wasn't seen ever again. The masked man must be Alistair, and he is using microbots to get back his teleporting machine. As soon as they took his name, the masked man appeared and threw a huge stone at them. Baymax saves everyone and removes the stone. The kids haven't planned any strategy and start attacking randomly. Gogo tries to distract the man while Honey and Wasabi look for a chance to attack. Unfortunately, the microbots are thousands in number and it's impossible to defeat all of them. Finally, Hero takes the lead and attacks along with Baymax. The man drops his mask and Hero grabs it immediately. But the biggest surprise is yet to come. The man behind the mask isn't Alistair. It's Professor Callahan. The blast at the exhibition happened accidentally, but Callahan used microbots to save himself. However, he didn't bother to save Tadashi, who only went there to save his professor. Hiro loses his temper, realizing that his brother sacrificed his life for nothing. In anger, Hiro takes out Baymax's healthcare chip and orders him to kill Callahan. Baymax's eyes turn red and he follows the orders. The other kids try to stop him and advise Hiro to get back to his senses. Alistair was about to get killed, but Honey put back the healthcare chip in time. Alistair picks up the mask and escapes immediately, but Hiro hasn't given up yet. He flies back to his labs with Baymax and fixes its scanning vision. Then he tries to take out the healthcare chip so he can kill Alistair and avenge his brother's death. Baymax doesn't let him do that and shows him all the footage Tadashi recorded during the making of Baymax. It took him countless attempts to finally perfect the working of Baymax. Tadashi seemed really happy and wanted to show the invention to his little brother. He believed the world needs Baymax and it's going to help numerous people. Hiro finally realizes that Tadashi never wanted violence and killing. Callahan definitely deserves a punishment, but he should be handed over to authorities. Hero apologizes to everyone, and they plan to catch Callahan. 
From the raw footage, they discover that Abigail was Callahan's daughter. She died because of Alistair's carelessness, and her father wants a bitter revenge. The next day is a grand ceremony at Alistair's headquarters. Callahan comes there as an uninvited guest and grabs Alistair. He also brought the teleportation tunnel that sucked in the building in bits and pieces. Abigail was everything for Callahan and he lost her, and now he wants Alistair to lose his everything. Hero and his friends reach there and try to convince Callahan to give up violence. Unfortunately, he isn't in a state to give up and attacks Hero's team. Everyone starts losing to the microbots while Hero is hardly preventing himself from getting sucked inside the tunnel. He suddenly remembers Tadashi's advice of looking at things from a different angle. He sends these great words to his team and they all start thinking out of the box. Baymax brings Hero back on the ground and he gives the new plan. They will no longer aim for the mask but instead, they are going to disintegrate the microbots. Due to their lighter weight, they will easily get sucked into the tunnel. The plan works and Callahan is left with just a few of his microbots. He can't fight with them and Hero can easily kill him. However, Hero keeps his temper down and just removes Callahan's. The enemy is defeated but the teleportation tunnel must be shut down. While others were trying to figure out a solution, Baymax sensed a form of life from the tunnel. It's a female in hypersleep. It must be Abigail. Hero can't let her die and jumps into the tunnel to save her. He finds Abigail inside a pod and grabs on to take her out. They were just a few miles away when a huge stone hit them. Baymax takes the attack on himself and his armor breaks. He can still send out Hero and Abigail safely with his rocket arm. The sweet robot asks Hero to say that he is satisfied with the care so Baymax can be shut down. This fluffy robot is the biggest and dearest invention of Tadashi. Hero can't bring himself to leave it but there's no choice. He comes out with Abigail while Baymax is left behind. Everyone is safe and Callahan is behind bars. Hero and his team's identity is kept secret and they are rumored to be superheroes. After a few days, Hero joins the Robotics Institute and sets up his new room. He also brought Baymax's rocket arm with him. Suddenly, Hero realizes there's something inside the fist. It's the healthcare chip. Using it, Hero reinvents Baymax and gets back his best buddy. They never planned to be superheroes, but fate had something else stored for them. Together with his other friends, Hero has made the most popular superhero team in the nation. The Big Hero 6. By hurting others, you can never decrease your pain. If you really want to get cured, try healing others and spreading happiness.